to get the money? Um, coming, well, we had an open session earlier, so this would be the open minute or the open meeting. Um, and first is public input and seeing no one here, I'll go with there's not any input. Um, and there is no student report today because the school is not open to the students. So new business, um, there's the annual review of town owned land. And I looked through it and I didn't okay. see that there was anything that sprang up. If anyone else had looked through it and thought maybe there was a good idea of some of it. Oh. No. Yeah, the, uh, this chairman, the only, I, I had sent an email to Mr. Bernard, the only, only part that I was wondering about is there's a there's a small piece of land between Southwick and where the little school property begins. Mm -hmm. and we were thinking about trying to do repaving and changing the parking. I just didn't know if, with, with any plans, if that piece of land would be useful at all. Uh, and I think Mr. Bernard was going to reach out to the town engineer just to see what that land was and if there'd be any use in that. That's okay. the only, that's the only land that seemed adjacent to the any school property, which I might think would be of interest to us. So, um, Madam Chairman, Mr. Buckley did reach out to me earlier today and just alerted me to the fact that he, you know, thought that that might be something worth exploring, and I, I agree. So I have written to the town engineer um, today and asked him if he could um, review the information with the map and, and, um, and then arrange for a time to speak with me about it. So um, I will pursue that, and when I have an update, let you folks know. Perfect. Is it this one that's listed as parcel 57 Southwick Road? Is that it? We're not sure, We're and not I think sure. I, I need okay. the town engineer's help with identifying uh, that because it's not identified on the map Could with be a Marbury number. Too. It's definitely uh, not that one we, because we that's think 87,000 square feet. Yes. Right. That's two, and two plus acres. So. And we believe it's a Barbary Road address. Yeah. Okay. There is a Barbary Road listed on the, on the list. but Which is approximately the right size, or at least from, from the map you pertinent, it might be the right size. It's hard yeah. to tell. Mm. I don't know. Okay. All right. Um, October 15, 2018, town meeting. Um, the warrant. Do you need to vote on that other than that, or? There was a well, discussion and vote it, listed. Yeah, but we can't wait. vote until we find out. So. Do they need for timeline? So do they need you, anything? You, you will. So if you if you want to um, place in my hands the determination on whether or not the committee, if the committee would be, have interest in that one parcel, if it would serve the purpose that. We hope it would, which would be to provide additional parking. I can indicate that. Otherwise, I'll submit it with no interest. That's fine with me if, if you are all in agreement. I, I would think a, a vote would probably be a, you know, an appropriate step. So I would move to uh, authorize Mr. Bernard to uh, follow up on that one parcel and determine whether we think it might be useful and otherwise uh, say that we have no interest in any of the others. I, I'll second, but before we do that, there's two Barberies, so we don't know which one is which. That's part of what he is going to be. That's what I need the town engineer. Yeah, but it's two parcels. That's all. I'm yep. Correct. It may, and it may, this may be neither Maybe of them. Maybe none of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the parcel is actually divided on the map. It right. could be two different sides of the street or if one parcel. I don't know. It, it, and it could be mislisted on the map as well. Right. So we don't. We don't exactly. Know. Yeah. All right. Having a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right, now on to the town warrant articles. Are there any articles that we have that we would need to upcoming no, or anything of that nature? So. Not, not from our perspective. Okay. Well, if we don't have any, there's. I think you would only need to vote if there was something to be right. submitted. Right. Okay. Um, the amendment to the 2018-2019 school calendar. Um, Mr. Bernard, would you like to? I would, Madam Chairman. Thank you. So um, in conversation with the middle school principal, Mrs. O'Connell, um, she believes, and I, and I agree with her, and um, that we would like to amend the, the calendar for 2018-19 by eliminating an early release day on Wednesday, January 23rd, and consequently eliminate the 
uh, evening parent-teacher conference night. So it would be a full day of school for children on the 23rd, and then the conferences would be held on the 24th and 25th, one in the evening and one on the afternoon. Um, Mrs. O'Connell, excuse me, Dr. O'Connell tells me that uh, historically, the, the the time needed is is more than than um, is is uh, necessary for the conferencing, and I think, quite honestly, she'd rather have the students in school and, and you know more contact time with teachers. Okay. Um, do you want to discuss it first, or should we take the motion? It doesn't matter which way, right? Nope. Does anyone have any concerns or comments? Nope. All right, and I'll entertain a motion to amend to the calendar year. Second. Okay, you can make the motion. No, oh, I'll make a motion to amend the 2018-2019 school calendar for the recommendations outlined by Mr. Bernard. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. carries. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, appointment to the North Shore Community Consortium Board of Directors. Um, in the past, it's always been our superintendent, <coughs> and I don't see any reason to change it, and it's a one-year um, <coughs> term. Any questions or comments? Uh, I, if, if you could just... Uh, explain what it is. Give you an overview? Sure. So, um, and, and if you don't mind, I'll speak about both, the SEAM Collaborative sure. and because yep. they're, they're similar. Um, so both of those schools are special schools for students with um, disabilities, special needs that um, we would we would send a student to when the district could not accommodate that need. And so we are part of a regional cohort so with the uh, SEAM Collaborative, there's maybe 10 districts and the North Shore Consortium, I think it's 12. We're, um, we recently admitted Ipswich, so that may be going to 13. And essentially, um, the school, the superintendent represents, it's usually the superintendent from all of the districts. So, so the superintendents make up a board that essentially functions like a school committee does, and, and the executive director of that collaborative functions much like the superintendent does. And so we have monthly board meetings, um, and, and I go, and I represent North Reading's interests, and um, I bring back usually a quarterly report to this committee um, on the actions of the of those various uh, collaboratives. Um, I bring the budget once it's adopted um, both, both back to the school committee so you see. Um, and I usually highlight for you um, when that budget is adopted what the benefits are by North Reading being a member community at each of those collaboratives and it is a, um, a significant financial savings by us being a member. Um, so as Mrs. Embriano said, traditionally the superintendent is appointed, appointed. I get appointed annually. Um, they are one-year terms by law, and um, I, think, I think it's fair to say that um, our participation on both of those collaboratives as a district um, is important because otherwise, you know, we might be challenged with a, a much more restrictive placement for students if they weren't able to be serviced either here or at a collaborative placement. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Um, if I could have a motion to nominate Superintendent Bernard to the North Shore Education Consortium Board of Directors. Move to appoint Superintendent Bernard to be a representative on the North Shore Education Consortium Board of Directors. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And again, he, for um, I'll entertain a motion to recommend Superintendent Bernard to the SEAM Collaborative Board of Directors which is also a one-year term. I move to uh, appoint Superintendent Bernard to the SEAM Collaborative Board of Directors. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are whipping through this. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, under routine matters, minutes for the June 4th open session town meeting. Okay, so um, on page one, at the bottom for the LD Batch Helder School Explorer Vision Team, we have a parent's name is Russo, and for the kid, we have Rusan, Alberto Rusan and Al Russo. So I don't know which name is correct there. So you're actually skipping the, the 11th. We're yeah. the 11th, 11th one or the 4th first? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, you we got to do the 4th first. <laughs> I move to approve the June 4th uh, minutes of the North Reading School Committee. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. So on the 11th down the bottom, we have Russo and Roussan for the two names. I don't know which one is right. I might be able to look quickly. I think it's Russo. That's my guess, too. Yeah, that was my recollection, but I might have it for Mr. Colleen. And then on the second page for the um, contract, the vote was actually 5-0 because Mike Gilberto voted. I think that has yes. to be noted in the minutes that the town administrator, Mike Gilberto, um, was part of the vote. I don't think Rich was here, right? I was not. Okay. Here. That's, that's right. So it would have been it would have been five zero, and I think in parentheses you should parentheses you should say including vote of town administrator Michael Gilberto. Correct. Okay. And I think that's it. Yeah, that was the only two things I found. Should, should you note the visitors, like the, the teachers that were retiring there as well, or not? The what? We were honoring the, some of the teachers that were retiring that night. I'm, I'm just question. I'm just wondering, should they be noted as visitors as well? I don't know. The visitors thing is always interesting to me. I yeah. always wonder why that's on the agenda in the first place. Because yeah. you could have 30 people in here, and they're not all going to be on there. Yeah, that's right. It's usually who you can identify or who speaks. I think. Yeah. Does that have to be part of the minutes? Is that a requirement? It's been on forever, right? It's always been, yeah, it's always been yeah. there. Yeah. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying I, would, I, I don't yeah, know. I, I don't know. Yeah. I would think maybe if someone were speaking and identifies, gives their name and address type yeah. of thing, maybe. Yeah. If you were on, if you were on the agenda to present something, I would think you'd be a visitor. But and I, I think that's typically what you do, Cindy. Am yeah, I right? If you're speaking, yeah. I hear their name. But, but if you're, but if you're, if they're there, so you can. Recognize, recognize them. them. Yeah. I wouldn't not, think you'd be yeah. considered a visitor. So I'm just questioning. When yeah, I don't. Right. Doesn't matter. But, yeah. And by the way, it is Russo. It is Russo. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. And you got the other change too on the contract. On the contract. Okay. So I move to accept the open minutes for June 11th, 2018, as amended. Second. So one. One comment, then, if we're gonna if we're gonna be consistent in visitors, then is that the one that Mr. Gilberto spoke at, then? So he yeah. should be Mr. Is that the one Mr. Gilber Gilberto was at? So he, he should be listed as a visitor since he yeah. spoke and gave made a statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did yeah. come in. Yeah, it seems like that. Was okay. He made a comment on the contract, yeah. <clears throat> and he voted. I mean, he was there as a. As a <laughs> I, I was I was absent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I guess that means. So we didn't have a vote on this, right? No, yeah. we have not. No. We didn't have a vote. We had a vote on the fourth, but not the eleventh. Right. We so had a he made the motion. Scott seconded. No, and Rich then seconded. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Rich, I made you, you made a comment. I made a comment. We had to vote no. So. Rich really probably shouldn't be seconded. Oh, Rich, Rich was here. No, he wasn't, he wasn't here. There. I'll second. Right. I didn't second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He he didn't second it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Scott second of the eleventh, yes. There we go. There we go. With as amended. All right. As amended. Four oh one. Is there any other okay. comments or corrections? All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. And it's four oh one. Did we okay. change on that one? Oh right, yes. Yeah. I said I but You yeah. did <laughs> abstain? All right. you, I mean you can vote on them. If he wasn't, if he wasn't well, there. He can vote, but, but it's normal. Vote. To abstain. To abstain. Procedures to abstain. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm certainly unconcerned either way. <laughs> okay. So we'll call it for If it were one contentious, abstention. then I would yeah. okay. think about it more. Right. It not being contentious. I would. <laughs> All right. Um, the budget update, Mr. Conley. Yes. Yeah, so um, as Mr. Bernard passed out at the beginning of the meeting, I know this wasn't in your packet, um, so you're probably just looking at it for the first time um, as I speak, speak to it. But uh, we did complete the closeout of fiscal year 2018. Just these past couple of days, we actually put the final touches on fiscal 2018 uh, as early as yesterday afternoon. So what I have in front of you is the final um, 2018 budget report, which reflects final expenditures and carry forward encumbrances for fiscal year 2018. 
And I'm happy to report that we, I do believe we had a smooth and successful closeout of fiscal year 2018. Um, you know, as projected, we did have um, some available surplus funds in various salary accounts, insurance, and some utility accounts that allowed us uh, to prepay special education tuitions. We were able to meet and even exceed um, the amount forecasted during the budget process of $150,000 in this area, which again will help provide some additional level of flexibility as we head into fiscal year 2019. Uh, we also were able to meet other available funds um, that we forecasted during the FY19 budget process to help pay June regular transportation and even athletic transportation costs from the general fund, which Again, all of these, these adjustments helped us, enable us to meet our carryover targets in these revolving funds to help match fiscal year 2019 budget offsets. Um, we have talked about the food service program each month at the monthly budget updates. And I'm happy to report that I met with the uh, officials from Chartwells and the food service director, Anna McGovern, over the past couple of weeks. And we did um, reconcile our federal and state reimbursement revenue and final receipts for the program, catering receipts, and, and completed our, our balance sheet and final uh, P&L statement. And I'm very pleased to report that the program did finish off with a net profit of $2,934. So I do believe this is the first um, you know, break-even, um, you know, self-supportive uh, year, ending the year in the black by the amount of $2,934 in at least a decade, if not more. So it's it's certainly something that was a goal this year that we had. Um, we've been working towards it for the in the high level of focus over the last five years, and um, we came very close last year. And I'm, I'm happy to report that we kind of got over that hump uh, this year through a lot of effort by many people, certainly including the food service director Anna McGovern, and the, the staff continued to do an exceptional job uh, this year. And I'm, I'm just very pleased to see the account, um, you know, finish the way it did. Um, you know, the average daily mail participation was up by 8.2% across the district. Um, adult sales were also up by a total of 7.5% this school year. To me, that is an indication <coughs> that efforts like the addition of the salad bar at the high school, for example, has been successful and has yielded some, some good results. Michael, quick, quick question. Yeah. 8.2%. What is the participation rate? Is it half the people, three quarters, a third? I mean, do we have any idea? Yeah, our, our overall participation rate for a district this size with our free and reduced lunch population is sitting just at about, uh, just under like 40%. Under 40%. Yeah, we're about right around 40%, which is pretty, pretty, pretty good okay. for a district our size. Um, so uh, adult sales are up 7.5%. Um, you know, meals sold to free and reduced lunch students was also up by a total of 15.7%. So that was an initiative or an area of focus over the last few years. We did receive our comprehensive uh, review by the DESC a few years ago. And this was an area that they highlighted that they felt we should focus on and maybe work to do a little bit better to just, what that's an indication of is that those students that are eligible for free and reduced lunch are assessing the program, and we want them to assess the program and, and receive that benefit. Um, and that also helps us uh, receive additional federal and state reimbursement dollars from, from the state. So that, that's a good trend. I'm happy to see that that is trending in the upwards direction. So overall, I think there's a lot of highlights uh, by the program. I think it's certainly on the right track. Um, and at the same time, I do remain optimistic that the program can continue to improve. So I, I met with with Anna McGovern and Chris Callahan, our, uh, our Chartwell's team, and I think we, we talked about you know, things we can continue to look at to try to uh, you know, keep the program not only break even or, or, or better. Um, for instance, exploring adding a breakfast program at the elementary level, that continues to be something we're, we're looking at very seriously, and we hope to potentially do that um, as early as the fall with maybe try, trying a, a program at the bachelor school, which just the largest school with more students in the before school program as a trial and with the hope that if there's success there they could ex expand to all, all the schools so it's it's, it's something that we're, we're exploring we're certainly always exploring ways to increase catering sales and, and so forth and um, I'll remind the committee that we did receive that that grant that funded um, 
a mobile breakfast cart, which we did receive already, and it's been, it's been put together. We're just waiting for a couple small parts to come in. Um, but we hope to roll that out at the high school, you know, middle school level. Uh, literally. <laughs> literally roll it out. Yeah. <laughs> roll it yeah, out. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but we're, we're hopeful that may also increase some sales and some flexibility and some Glad that we all allow us right. to, yeah. <laughs> to uh, access some additional students at the high school level. Um, so, again, a lot of highlights, but they're certainly pleased with the performance of the food service program. Um, Continue on with the report on, again, on the payroll side. Really, nothing significant to report, as it's been the case all year. I'm, ha I'm happy to, 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 to say that you know there's certainly been some turnover and attrition, and um, this funds reflective available in the teacher and custodial line items. But you know, overall, final payroll expenses are very close to our budgeted line items. So, despite uh, some challenging, you know, a challenging winter with some with some you know cold and severe weather and some unexpected costs, maintenance costs, and so forth, I think due to our conservative you know spending approach and the way we were able to, to manage the budget throughout the year, um, we were able to achieve the year-end carryover funds we had planned on during the, the fiscal year 2019 budget process, and I think overall. I'm, Certainly pleased with how fiscal year 2018 closed out, and I, I do think, you know, although things are tight, as we know they were during those folks that certainly were heavily involved in the planning and the development of fiscal year 2019, I, I, I do think we're in, you know, solid financial standing as we start fiscal year 2019. As you can see by the report, you know, we, we essentially almost spent, you know, down to the dollar of what we had available in the general fund for fiscal year 2018. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions. The typical format was included. I also included the kind of the town meeting template that breaks down salaries and expenses in the major functional categories um, for your information as well. That I'll take any questions. Any, I was going to ask the, uh, the food cart, but you already mentioned that, so yep. I'm all good. Great job, by the way. Thank you for all your hard work. Mr. Bernard. Mm -hmm. Following up on what you just said, Madam Chairman, I just Michael acknowledged the efforts of Anna McGovern and the food service workers in helping to bring about, I think for the first time, certainly in a long time, maybe the yeah. first time ever, um, zero deficit with the food services account, but Michael did not acknowledge his own efforts, and I can tell you, I have firsthand knowledge of his very intimate uh, involvement in working with people to, to achieve that. It, it is a significant achievement, and it really is something that is, um, is worthy of, of kind of public commendation, as well as the closeout of fiscal year 2018. That is, Michael's department and he himself um, worked very hard to close out the budget, um, in a timely fashion, and they do that with great skills. So I, I want to publicly commend Michael and his staff for, for their efforts, both in food services and in the business department. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I have a quick question. In terms of the food service program, how do you account for, um, you know, dropping enrollments going forward? Will that... Will that impact revenues? Will, should it also impact costs? I mean, I just... Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we are looking at a, a slight decline overall throughout the district um, in the coming years, uh, with the, the largest decline being at the high school level. Right. So it, it should have a, we don't think it will have a significant impact on revenue. I think you're right, I think with maybe a, a loss a little bit on the revenue side because of the decline, I think you'd also you'll, you'll pick up some on the product costs and so forth. But so we don't, it's not part of our, we're not anticipating that it will be a large you know, hurdle to overcome. And the good news is getting to a profit, we don't even have to think about raising lunch prices at this time, correct? Right. Correct. Excellent. <coughs> Any other comments? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you again, Michael. Thank you. Yep. Um, next on the agenda is staffing. No, Mr. he's, Michael what? has more, right? Does he have the, the rest of the budget you stuff? The uh, quarterly. The quarterly. Oh. Sorry. Um, the in-kind contributions. Yeah, so those are part of the gifts and donations. Yes, yeah, so you yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're going to do it by gifts and donations. Okay. Yeah. So are we on? There's no staffing, right? So we're on. I, I, had identified, I had identified this as part of the budget update, but it can be. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was under budget update. just going to accept update. those gifts. You can do it when you do the yeah. gifts. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, so what, what I actually will do, so right, what's including in your packet is under bids and donations, uh, or the, an update on the budget was the final... Um, you know, the final quarter of the year, uh, your parent donations that, that we did receive. Um, and again, it's just a, a significant, as you can see by this quarter, March through June, we already accepted 
September through November than um, you know December through February at, at prior meetings. But it just, we continue to receive a, a large amount of in-kind contributions through the PTO budgets. And tonight's meeting reflects the, the final quarter. Um, we ask for your acceptance. And then what I do plan on doing, because um, we did put the final touches on it recently, and in the August meeting I will present the, the final list of both uh, monetary and in-kind donations for fiscal year 2018, um, which will include all these that are on the list tonight, as well as all, all the donations you've accepted throughout the fiscal year. And we, we are north of $200,000 again in the total list, which is just exceptional. So you, you can do these now if you'd like, or you can do them with the other gifts. It's totally up to you. Um, I actually only received one from the... You should have a packet of four, and then the late packet. one, which was the Hood School that I gave you tonight. Oh, there it is. Yeah, we received okay. the Hood yeah. School yeah. one a little bit later. Yeah, we go. Um, yeah. Do those now? Yes. Sure. Yes, we'll do that. All right. So, um, so there should be a stapled set of four. Yep, and then, and the then there's the this one single new one. And dated July 15th. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so I will entertain a motion to accept yeah, that was my um, the bids and donations packets if someone wants to be so gracious as to read them all. I'll go through them, sure. Okay. So one, one, f five times, right? Well, there's yes. actually totally. three more. Yes. Four, four and one, right? Four There's have seven them. for this, and there's three more under correct mm -hmm. under business three, donations. There's three more under gifts and donations. That mm -hmm. starts with the Batch Parents Association. Oh, the one dated June 29. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Got it. So okay. You got like nine of them. That's fine. Um, Take a deep breath now. <laughs> Madam Chairwoman, I uh, move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude and donation of one hundred dollars from the Batchelor Parents Association. I'll set the transportation cost from the third grade field trip to the Concord Museum. Second. Having the motion, um, any questions or comments? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Madam Chairwoman, I move to ex uh, that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $900 from the J. Turner Hood Parents Association to offset field trip costs for grades one, three, and four at the J. Turner Hood Elementary School. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Madam Chairwoman, I move that the uh, school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $1,500 from the Batchelder Elementary School to support the cost yeah. from the Parents Association to support the cost of a new bench and iPads at the Batchelder Elementary School. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Going to the July 10 pages. Madam Chairwoman, I uh, move that the committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for um, totaling $10,072.22 for teacher supply reimbursements, enrichment activities, class field trip expenses from the uh, uh, LD Batchelder Ele Elementary School Parents Organization. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Madam Chairwoman, I uh, move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for teacher supply reimbursements, enrichment activities, general school supplies, and other miscellaneous items totaling $14,447.62 from the E. Ethel Little School Elementary School Parents Association. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Madam Chairwoman, I move that this committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for enrichment activities, teacher appreciation breakfasts and luncheons, eighth grade legacy day activities totaling $6,541.57 from the uh, 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 North Reading Middle School Parents Association. Second. Pardon my hesitation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And Madam Chairwoman, I move to uh, that the committee vote to accept with gratitude and in-kind donations for enrichment activities uh, involving presentations and speakers from the North Reading High School Parents Association totaling $3,250. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And lastly, uh, Madam Chairwoman, I move that the committee vote to accept with gratitude uh, in-kind donations 
in, including teacher supply reimbursements, field day expenses, enrichment activities, and teacher appreci appreciation activities, totaling $7,744.06 from the J. Turner Hood Elementary School Parents Association. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. This town is very, very generous. They are extremely generous. I like that it's a long list. Agreed. Okay, now to Mr. Bernard for staffing. Madam Chairman, thank you. So in your packet, you have uh, an updated staffing report with highlights of staff hired since my last presentation to you on uh, June 25th. Hired at the Batchelder School as a special education teacher is Benjamin Pursehouse as a school adjustment counselor. Um, actually, we've changed the position to a school psychologist, excuse me, as uh, Christina Petri at the Batchelder School. The, at the little school, Emily Barrett is a grade one teacher. She will be replacing uh, Mrs. Levitt, who has um, very much um, happy for her, advanced her career. She's been appointed a principal at, a, at the Barrows Elementary School in Reading. So congratulations, congratulations. to Mrs. Yes. Levitt, uh, who has had a wonderful, wonderful career. I know she's sad to leave North Reading, but I share in her, um, her happiness for her new position and thank her for her service to North Reading. Um, Allison Powers has been hired as an integrated pre-kindergarten teacher also at the little school and a new special education teacher at the high school, Miss Madeline Lund. We do have a number of positions that are still vacant um, in the summer months. We are active. I have a person that's coming in for an interview, final interview with me on Monday. Um, but uh, we, we are closing very rapidly on our, our hiring and uh, I expect a full complement of staff for the opening of school. So I'll give you an additional update on on August 27th at your next meeting. All right. And I'm sure if I could ask a question, I, I know we have um, two head coach positions open, the yeah. uh, girls lacrosse and football coach. Can you give us any kind of update on those? I can. I can give you an update on the, um, on the, on the football, um, particularly I think the lacrosse will be, you know, because we have more time. Yeah, time, right. That. right. Yeah, the football. So um, we had 14 applicants. Five were uh, called, that list was called down to five uh, semi-finalists that were interviewed yesterday. Okay. My understanding is that there are two, possibly three. In fact, I think it's more likely that there will be three second interviews held tomorrow. So I think it's going to be three, two or three, more likely three of those five that were interviewed yesterday are coming in for a second interview tomorrow. So then hopefully an offer made early <laughs> next week. Assuming sometime. that those interviews go uh, well and if there's a need for reference checks beyond what we've already done, then I, I, would, I would think next week is a, is a reasonable time frame for announcement of uh, offering that position and an announcement of who that position will be. So. And is it a requirement for coaching that you work in the district? No. No? no? Okay. Most of our head coaches do, most of our right. coaching staff, but not all. Okay. Yeah. And it, and it is not a requirement. Yeah. Is there a preference given to in district or not? Does it matter? You asking me personally what I think? I I, I, think, I don't know what I the guidelines that, are. I think I'm not that sure. there's I think there's a, there's in my opinion there there can be advantages to a person that works in the district as a teacher because they know students and they're available to students and families in a different way. They're able to monitor academics and work with students. You know, if they then if they were out of town in another profession or whatever, but. Um, I don't know that there's necessarily a preference given, but I think if you look at it as all things being equal, I think yeah. there sometimes is a benefit that you know we do acknowledge. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. And those are the only two positions we have open, right? There's no all the other head coaches. There is uh, an assistant. Assistant, in, right? But um, soccer, girls' right. soccer. Right. But in volleyball, was there? Um, do we have JV volleyball coach? Uh, too? Assistant, yes, correct. Assistant, right? right. Yeah. Head coach. And those are both State. fall sports, also. Correct. Okay. The football one was, you know, it was a late announcement of, of Coach Wall's resignation, and and the athletic director Dave Johnson, the high school principal, got on that. They formed a committee. We did inf include students and a student and a parent, um, as well as Sean Colleen as a head coach. For the one, interviews. One of the assistant oh, coaches of the football program, Chuck Campabasso. Oh, good. Yeah, Matt Selecki, you might know Matt yep. Selecki, a student. Um, Chuck Carucci Jr. was a parent representative. Assistant Principal Mike Downs. So it was, you know, and they, and they, got, they got on it right away. They selected the semifinalists on Monday, interviewed yesterday, and the second interviews are tomorrow. So I think we've, we've moved pretty aggressively on that with the understanding that, you know, double sessions are just around That's the corner. It's going to be almost really. an immediate, <laughs> yes. immediate start. Yeah. Pretty quick. Once, if so. someone accepts, it would be almost yeah. immediate. Yeah. yeah. So I th I, I'm optimistic we'll be in a good place sometime in the next week. Thank you. Sure. Okay, on to subcommittee updates. And there should just be the one because I don't believe anyone else has gotten together since the last time. 
So, um, Rich or Diane? Yeah, sure. We um, we started to go through the policies. We uh, starting it from the very beginning and doing a review. Um, but we are we are hoping to bring some to the committee shortly that will be revised. Um, a lot of updates came from town meeting things such as the name of the oh, right. selectmen and yeah. some of the updates came from the recent MASC bulletin um, around protected classes. So really simplistic things thus far and um, yeah. we're looking to if our next meeting is in September to continue. Mm. I think I think so far we only came up with one where we think is yeah, requires just, a vote. The others are just going to be revisions because of yeah. those sort of uh, <coughs> mechanical changes. Yeah. Um, I know that um, the Mass Association of School Committees sent out um, a letter recently, and the blue one had a couple of policy things yes. on that's it. That's what we have. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that's one that's of the ones that you went Correct. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. The only other one I would ask about is in our meeting at 430, I noticed the handheld device policy right. mentioned again. The guidelines. I know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I mean, like, and, and I know we use. talked, when we when I was on it last year, we talked about whether or not there needs to be a policy on handheld devices and for use of the new computers, the one-to-one -one devices, and so. Yeah, that's I think we that probably needs some attention. We backburnered it. I think somebody, I think. Dan Downs. Uh, Dan Downs was yeah. working on it, and yeah. so that's the only thing that, like, when we did it last year, that's one thing we never got to, but passing to you. <laughs> the other thing, too, um, I guess, now that you mentioned that, is there was roughly, what, 99? I think we talked, that, I think it was 99, yeah. That yeah. need to be ousted just because they're no longer whatever. Um, no, I think 99 was one that needed to be revised, and there was a, another group. Right. Right. That, that, that they were recommending. I think we talked a little bit. So are you, as you The other day about some that may need to be. Are or, you just kind of weeded out? We didn't encounter any the other day in Section A. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think when, you looked at sec, when we looked at Section A, we saw a lot of things where we questioned why we had to have a policy there. Um, for instance, they seem to be stating things that were more in the overview of, a, of the town charter, or, or, but, but we did not change. We did decided to sort Maybe. of leave those be. Uh, certainly, that kind of major restructuring, I think, would be a bigger effort, not an unworthy one, but um, something we'll probably need to think about a little more before we sort of dive into it. Okay. Very good. Isn't it fun? <laughs> we had a good meeting. It was a good yeah. meeting. It was a good meeting. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a necessary and sometimes yeah. fruitful exercise. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Upcoming um, subcommittee schedule, the Substance Abuse Coalition, July 24th at 10 a.m., not 11, at the police station. Note to self. <laughs> and NORCAM. <laughs> 11? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Anyway, the North Cam Board of Directors meeting is September 27th at 7 p.m. at the North Cam office. And that's it for the John, subcommittee. Did, did we not set a athletic subcommittee for August? We didn't. We said no. We, we said didn't. no for July, but we didn't set one for August no, either. No, we didn't set the date that I had. I could be wrong. If you have it there, please let me know. No, I don't. I yeah, thought. I didn't think we had. I thought it was going to be at the call of. Because we're going to have to have one in August. I we will have one right? in August, yeah. yeah. OK. All right, on to the administrative reports. Mr. Burke. Thank you, Madam Chairman. So in my report, I had a couple of things for all of you and, and for the community. Um, the first is I, I wanted to call out for you some important dates coming up. Um, on our August 7th, the community impact teams sponsored uh, National Night Out, an annual event. I think this is the fifth annual. will be held um, on August 7th at 530 Ipswich River Park with a rain date of August 14th. Um, on August 28th at noon is the new educator luncheon. So that will be the first of two days of um, orientation for our new staff. And you are all welcome to join um, the group um, and the administration for lunch. Um, you're not, you're, I don't want you to feel obligated to be there, but you're certainly welcome to be there. On a, I think every year, at least one member, Mr. Webster is pretty faithful in attending, but others have, have joined him at, on occasion. But um, certainly we'd love to have you if your schedule um, allows. And on September 4th is, um, is the opening day meeting with staff. That's the district-wide staff. That meeting will again be uh, begin at 12 o'clock in the Performing Arts Center here um, at the Middle High School. 
Um, the committee traditionally is in, is in full force at that meeting, um, and the chairman makes a brief address to the faculty. So um, just wanted you to have that for your calendar. I attached for you, um, and I have the actual magazine uh, here if you want to see it, um, but I, I thought it was nice to call out for um, our Director of Digital Learning, Dan Downs. He was recently published um, with an article in this magazine called Empowered Learner, and uh, Dan's article was entitled The Partner to Amplify Advocacy at the Highest Levels. Um, I just thought it was nice to see uh, him having been published in a magazine around digital learning initiatives across the country, and um, I think you all have have been uh, witness to Dan's presentations before you, his work with the uh, Digital Learning and Technology Plan most recently, I think in the January presentation before you. Um, he's doing some nice work and I thought I wanted to call his atten your attention to, um, to his recently having been published. Um, my annual presentation to you of the students, uh, high school students' uh, performance on the advanced placement exams is included in the packet. Um, I, I think it's likely there may be an article in the transcript next week. I know Mr. LaPrette met with Maureen uh, Doherty this past Monday, which is typically what the high school principal does. Um, once again, our, <clears throat> you know, I think the call-outs for, for the committee and the public regarding our students' advanced placement performance, um, you know, first and foremost, I would lead with um, the number of students that we have taking advanced placement courses and the advanced placement tests that are administered. Um, this year we approached almost 500 exams. You see it on the chart that I've attached with you, 492 exams. I always like to remind folks that when I started as the high school principal in 2003, there were 87 exams administered. So we're you know, kind of approaching that five times as many exams. Um, we do have an open enrollment policy. I think everyone is aware of that. Um, so there is always a bit of a you know, I think a conversation around, you know, is that or is that not a good thing? Um, we believe that it is. Um, and this year, our, our students um, in the 2018 test administration uh, tied um, the class of 2016 performance report with 71% of students receiving a, a qualifying score, which is a 3, 4, or a 5. Um, some, some ideas that um, I think are worthy of mentioning to you is that um, the, um, the United States Government in Politics course had a 28% increase in its qualifying score. That certainly is something to be particularly proud of. Um, similarly, in statistics, there was a 21% increase in the qualifying scores. Um, we continue to have chemistry and physics as focus areas for us. That it, Those exams have traditionally not been our highest performing um, exams. Um, we are, I, I can tell you that we, the St. Johnsbury College runs a workshop every summer for teachers of, um, of the advanced placement exam and our chemistry teacher is attending this summer um, as a means of kind of just further preparing for the course to be taught in the fall. Um, but it, it's, it be, remains in our, an area where we, we, would, we think we should be doing better and, and we will be supporting teachers and students to do that. But uh, overall, I think the news is very good. Um, I'm very proud of, um, the teachers who, who work very hard, the advanced placement courses are not easy courses to take. They're not easy courses to teach. They require an awful lot. Um, they're college level courses, but um, I still believe today that our open enrollment policy, as long as a student has met a prerequisite course, um, is the right way to go. And I think the benefits to that are, 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 are that um, our students do better across the board on, on standardized tests such as the SAT. Um, they, I find they're better prepared for college. Our students, you know, success rate in freshman year of college is pretty high. Um, our guidance counselors do run an alumni survey, um, and we, we get good feedback on that. So um, I think it's important to highlight how our students are doing, when, no matter what the news. But right now, for this year, it, it is, uh, in my opinion, very good news. Just a, a question. Sure. Um, do you have any idea, maybe this is just near and dear to my heart since I taught these two subjects back in the day, but. Um, do you have any idea why, why the chemistry and physics are so low? Like, you know, do you know what, why, I don't. what's you know, not it's, meeting? It's traditionally been a difficult okay. exam for our kids. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I wish I had a better answer for you. I mean, we do the professional development. We, we also participate, Linfield High School happens to be a site for the Salem State Collaborative and they do um, voluntary practice exams. Mm -hmm. um, and they host them there for almost all of the exams that we administer, but not all. And when they don't, we have our own teachers run a practice exam, usually on a Saturday, um, for students to just give them a familiarity of the exam. We do participate in, in, in all of the ones that are available. 
Um, we have just, you know, the exam for physics changed about three years ago, maybe four, but it's just, it has not, I, I don't have a good answer for you. I don't think it's for a lack of anything that we're not trying to do better. Um, I just, I don't know that we've ever been good at trying to identify where is the gap and what, what could be done differently. I do remember a few years ago when I was the high school principal, I, I had the teachers collaborating with neighboring districts where um, performance was better, better yeah. try to learn like what are some strategies. I think, you know, I think I, w I was hopeful at the time mm -hmm. that that would bear more than it has, but um, I guess what I can tell you is it continues to be a focus area for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because just, just I quickly called up the national um, scores here. We're far far below in those two. In those two, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's. I thought maybe it was you know like with um, like an anomaly. MCAS MCAS science yeah. in the middle school, how it's yeah. always, but everybody across the state is low. Yeah, but no, it's not the case, which is interesting. It is. Is there certain prerequisites that you need to or criteria you need to meet to take those two classes? I know that we're more open with people taking yes. is, is, so, but the I think that might be part of it and, the pre and those harder it more might. difficult courses the prerequisites are, I bet I think are more are more stringent yeah yeah that's yeah. that's they probably are one are place where our yeah. as well yeah, yeah. our yeah. open okay. enrollment right. policy is it's the, uh, that makes the score average results lower. yeah right that's it probably is a factor you know but I just don't have any data to say. and I can, I can say to you that it definitely is a factor yeah. and you don't and that's not a factor you can act on so right correct you might as well just set it aside but it right. is it's just you know certainly a possibility because the other one where you think maybe it would be the same would be and you look at the calculus a b eight out of 23 again prerequisites a little more stringent yep, exactly you know, so right yeah. and it's interesting too because science and, and you may all be aware but I think certainly those of you who have been around for a while you know si our science program is our most robust academic program in the school I mean it's we require four years right. of science but I can I know many students are taking six seven science courses over the course of their four-year career here um, the bi you know biology I think we had about more than double the number of tests given uh, from to over 2017. You know, 85 it's, it's kids. Just, yeah, it's just interesting. You know, so it's not, it's the sciences are very popular and attractive here and students enroll far beyond what they're required to take, but you know, we just have not been able to move the mark on those two. Got to get that economics class going. Yeah. That runs, that runs sometimes and not, yeah. Well, I was, I was, I was noticing, that at least according to the, the test numbers, it's been a while. So it has. Yeah. What's not on the chart too is we did have one student take a take an exam in Japanese, and scored a five. Eight. Scored a five, oh, wow. which is the highest score you can get. Pretty impressive. Statistics, Statistics is, is tough. yeah, it is. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been some nice improvement in some, yeah. like U.S. Yeah. government. U.S. government up. had a big increase yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. U.S. government yeah. jumped up quite a bit. Um, U.S. government had its highest recorded average since 2005, I believe. It was a 28 percent increase in the qualifying yeah. score. That calculus was calculus took a pretty big dip and. Obviously, the chemistry and physics just stands out as concerning. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happens every year, too, and I get a couple calls on this every year, is the results come out, the Globe, but somebody publishes them, and we're never in the top in terms of scores, percentage with with three or above, because we have an open enrollment. Yeah. But 71 percent with an 71's open enrollment. 71's pretty good, pretty yeah. Good. I mean, that's a good number. That is. For open enrollment, that's really good. We may be back on the AP honor roll this year too, which would be four of the last six years. Yeah, so that could be that, that we may get on that with this, right? Um, with that seventy-one percent, which would be a nice boon too. Yep. I'm going to break a little bit. My daughter got a four in psychology, so she's I don't even jumping know what into my the son next got. one. Oh, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell you, so I excited. have them. <laughs> you, you might have to. You know, I, you know getting it from they're me on my desk <laughs> is harder. <laughs> you may have told me. And then the last thing I have, Madam Chairman, I just wanted to follow yeah, up with, exactly. with you. I think it had been brought up at the last meeting or two meetings ago. I'm not sure. But I did have a meeting with Rob Carboni. Um, hi, Rob. Up in the back of the house. Um, right after school got out, I think it might have been like June 29th or so or somewhere in that area, 28th or 29th. Uh, Rob and I had a good meeting. We continued to work um, with each other and also Phil Healy from NORCAM. Um, we're, we're looking to schedule a series of, I'll call them informational workshops for students and any interested community members to learn more about the use of the uh, video equipment with the goal of maybe having more um, school-based, I'll say school-based, but maybe community-based activities recorded and broadcast using NORCAM, you know, through the local cable. So whether it's athletic events, dramatic performances, art show, you know, I think any, 
I don't want to speak for Rob, but I think we're, we're pretty open to just about anything that, you know, would have relevance and, and interest in the community. So um, we're looking to do the first, the idea is to kind of do three sets of meetings um, throughout the year, with the first being um, late summer before the start of the school year. So if there are people that are interested, they can learn familiarity with the use of the cameras and, and then be available for the start of the school year. That's a good um, idea. You know, our, our video production program at the, at the middle school and the high school is, is now, you know, we've seen it kind of, you know, you've seen some of the presentations when right. staff have come in for the meetings that are held with the schools. And, you know, I think we're at a place now where we're seeing more and more students being, you know, number one, um, skilled at the use of the equipment and, and their interest in using it increasing. So we, we're going to try to capitalize on that and see if we might be able to do uh, some more showcasing of things that are going on f through the use of NORCAM. So I want to thank Rob and, and Phil uh, for bringing uh, Mr. Buckley into the fold at a recent NORCAM meeting where here's the board's, the committee's representative to the board. And, um, you know, w Rob and I have known each other a long time and, you know, I think we've always had a good working relationship. This is just another thing we're going to try to, to tackle and see if we might be able to make some positive movement with. So thank you, Rob. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's it's hard to work with Mr. Carboni at times. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that, Rob. <laughs> That's all I have, Madam Chairman. All right. Thank you. Um, for future business, uh, we have a. Oh, <coughs> we don't need to do that. <coughs> would, would there be interest in having the regular meeting at four thirty? No. Since you had that time blocked out already. I would, I would rather not, but I know you didn't we, move, didn't we move this meeting for you already? I <laughs> I'd rather not, too. You'd rather have right. 6.30? Yeah. yeah. So we no longer need the girls' <laughs> workshop. So on August 27th at 6.30 is the regular um, school committee meeting here at the Distance Learning Lab, and then the next one will be September 10, also here at the Distance Learning Lab. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Motion carries. Thank you. 728.